Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green, ThinkTech Hawaii. Have I got an unusual and entrepreneurial guest for us today? This is Frank Rogers, president of the Cool Roof Store. If you are a habitué of Baritania, you have seen his store with these funny looking teeny little homes, one <coughs> on the ground, one up on a, a stage. And that is him. And there's all kinds of implications. Of course, we're going to talk about the uses of a tiny home, all kinds of uses, and the construction of the home are near and dear to my heart because they, are, they work as effectively as insulation in retarding the heat from getting into the space. But all it is is three quarters ply with some stuff on the exterior and some stuff on the interior. Very fascinating stuff. So welcome to the show, Frank. <clears throat> really pleasure to uh, see you. And, you know, we've got so many slides, so much material. Why don't we just jump right in and sure. show the first slide, and you can just take it away here. Okay, well, uh, we'll do it. And again, thank you, Howard, so much mm -hmm. for having me on the program. I really appreciate mm -hmm. it. Um, if you've gone down Baratania Street, you've probably seen us a couple times and our, our store. And if you look up on the screen there, yeah. we have two tiny houses that are currently models. The one on the top floor, right above the Cool Roof store sign, which is where, where our building is, is was decorated to kind of be kind of an upscale, um, you know, Kahala type of look with our tiny house. And it has a lot of faux finishes on it, so you can have whatever kind of roof you really want to have on it. You can have mm -hmm. a, a tile roof or a shingle roof. And you can kind of see mm -hmm. the, a couple different um, viewpoints. The lower house is kind of um, what, what I call the Kalapana um, one because it's kind of a rising from the ashes. Mm -hmm. And so we just decorated it different. And you'll yeah. see when we get down sure. to the interior that the one on the bottom has a second story loft, which you can either use for sleeping mm -hmm. or Let's for go to the, the second uh, slide because it, this is quite, quite a, the slide <laughs> has a story behind it. What in the world is going on here? Okay. <laughs> so what motivated me to get in this yeah. market was, um, my brother had done some container housing, and he'd, he, he'd bid on and done some projects for the city and the state, and we also mm -hmm. consulted a little bit with the Sand Island project, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. <clears throat> and that was with container-type housing, Matson-type container housing. And for me, I found that it was very confining with the container housing. There were a lot of problems with it. There's a lot of strength with it, too, mm -hmm. and, and my brother does sell a lot of them. But I wanted to start off from the ground, from the ground zero and decided, if I build a structure that was super durable, could be erected quickly, could be de deconstructed quickly, mm -hmm. could last over 30 years with minimal maintenance, and I didn't have to worry about the building department telling me what to do, how could I do that? Mm -hmm. And by the way, I'm not to compare myself at all to this, but I hear that Elon Musk, when he designs whatever, he, he uses a similar thing where he just says all rules are out, and then, then you design it the way you want it to. Mm -hmm. but we want it to be super strong, could be used even for the Coast Guard, the, uh, the military, emergency housing could be collapsed. And so and the more I thought about it, the more I, I really simplified the construction of it so that we just ended up with a very a simple but durable construction, lightweight, and could be easy to use. And, and why don't we go to the third slide to uh, illustrate this. Wow, how portable can you get? That's, that's the house. That's our house. That's, yeah. I think that's the latest one we just cut. And it's, that's all the sheets that you need to do all the roof, walls, floors, and decks of the entire house. Now, there's a aluminum framework, which we'll show, and some other things, but that is, in essence, the whole 10 by 12 uh, foot structure. Mm -hmm. uh, so we started with a 10 by 12 because it's 120 square feet, and that's the minimum, uh, excuse me, the maximum amount you're allowed to build without having a building permit, as long as you mm -hmm. use it mm -hmm. for storage. And so mm -hmm. we tell our customers, mm -hmm. that's for storage, you can do this, you don't need a permit. If you want to use it for anything else than a permit, you have to check with the building department. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping that some rules might be, um, once we prove the, the integrity of our structure, that maybe mm -hmm. we can uh, start to um, get some permitted projects on this too, mm -hmm. and to build out bigger than the 120, because that's like a little Lego building block. You can put them together, it can be 120, um, 240, 480, mm -hmm. et cetera, and you can go build in either direction to make it as big as you want. Mm -hmm. And let's uh, look at the next slide. We're going through quickly because there's a whole lot of slides and we have some show and tell here too. Yeah, so this is our panel. It's three quarter inch plywood, which is very strong. It has kind of a cross, you know, uh, lamination on it. 
And both sides have a um, high pressure laminate, similar to formica would be what you would think of, mm. on the skin. And this is our basic building block. And the, the plywood, three quarter inch plywood is really quite strong. And, um, and we combine that with our aircraft aluminum um, framework, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but here's how the panels, the wall panels slide together. We have a, an aluminum panel connector. Now this is industrial grade aluminum too. This, yes. Yeah. Um, well, this, this, the structural aluminum here <clears throat> that we use for the structure is a T6 and the alloy is called 6061. It's an uh, aircraft and structural grade aluminum. Mm -hmm. And it's put together with stainless steel brackets and um, 5 16 stainless bolts, and it's nutted on all sides. So extremely strong aluminum, corrosion resistance, stainless steel, and then aluminum panel dividers. Uh, divider so slash so in, a, in a marine environment, you can put this right next to the ocean. and. It ain't going to corrode. You can. We would say don't submerge it for long periods of oh, time in, in a next, salt tank. Next to the ocean, not near the Next to the ocean would <laughs> yeah. be, but the reason I say yeah. for long periods of time is I mm -hmm. believe that if you had a, a flooding situation mm -hmm. like you have on Kauai, and your house mm -hmm. flooded all the way up and it was flooded for a day or two, and, mm -hmm. then, and, and then it, when the floods um, subside, if you just dry it out all out, you're not going to have any mold or mildew mm -hmm. or any penetration to here because you don't have any exposed uh, plywood panels once it's all encased. It's sealed up with a sealant on all sides. So you have a waterproof, you know, formica type mm -hmm. surface. Again, not formica, but um, uh, high pressure laminate, HPL, and uh, all connected together. Now, this is put together. This is like, a, imagine this is a corner post mm -hmm. here. And so your sheathing or your siding would come down on the sides, and then it's bolted, through bolted, in, all the way across, and that gives it a lot of structural integrity as well between the two. Really quite a heavy um, corner piece. Uh, so this is, this is the structure of the, uh, of the unit. I think you'll see that in some of the slides coming up, how we put it together. So it's a very lightweight structure, but um, only a couple thousand pounds. So it can be collapsed down in a very small mm -hmm. amount, you know, into a, a pile like we saw about two to three feet mm -hmm. big. <clears throat> and so our idea was that if, say, the Red Cross, hopefully, or emergency services had maybe a dozen or two dozen of these in a warehouse, if you had an emergency, um, like the flooding on a Kauai or a hurricane or a fire or whatever you or, have. Or a lava flow. Or a lava way. flow. Yeah. Yeah. You could quickly put these on a helicopter and <clears> then fly them. Um, to the site, say to Pahoa, and you know, obviously in less than a day, just load them up, just forklift them in there, and then um, it can be put together with just kind of like um, if one or two people are like a good, what I call an expert handy person, mm -hmm. they're good with um, things, they don't have to be a contractor, but kind of like a big IKEA set you're putting together and you're mm -hmm. bolting it all together, because everything is screwed or bolted, nothing is nailed together, it all comes in mm -hmm. panels. So. We say that two people in two or three days can assemble it or disassemble mm -hmm. it. So let's say that you had a situation where the village was wiped out. You have a lot of willing labor right there. All you need is one or two um, instructors. You know, we could do it, but other people could do it as well using our instructions and can come in. And they can teach people, um, relatively untrained people, how to assemble all these. And you would have a village within just you know, a couple of days to a week. Yeah, well, whereas village. in normal disasters, we're talking people, especially mothers and children, kind of out in the elements for days and days and days. Right, yeah. and this will be completely waterproof, completely mm -hmm. rustproof, completely termite-proof. There's a termocide inside all the wood panels, uh, but it's safely ensconced in, in, in your formica covering. And, um, and you'll see that we can fit a family, a small family of, um, you know, uh, you know, three to five people mm -hmm. if needed in just one of these units. Yeah. <coughs> now, five, five people would get pretty cozy, <laughs> but what the heck, it's a whole lot better than being outdoors. Yeah, when we show the interiors, I'll show you yeah, how, how you yeah, can yeah. do it. Uh, five is stretching it, but... Mm -hmm. um, in I'm this, thinking a husband, wife, and, and two, two little kids. kids. Two, yeah. two yeah. little kids, you could do it. Yeah. Three little kids, you could do it. <laughs> yeah, three medium-sized really... kids, you could do it. Yeah. But after <laughs> that, you're, um, you're, you're pushing it. What, but, why don't we go to the next uh, slide? See what we have offering here. Oh yeah, here's your construction. And yeah, so here's, here's how it's all just <clears> you know, screwed <throat> mm -hmm. together. Now you're seeing that we have a, a, a built-in um, gutter in essence, and it collects the water. So the water will roll down there, it hits the gutter so it doesn't go into the you know, 
splashy when you come out the door. But you can collect all that water in, in your water collection collection system on the side of the uh, on the mm -hmm, side of the, mm -hmm. the place there. And the um, the coatings that we use, the heat reflective coatings that are integral to the cooling of this building, have also been approved um, for a potable water, drinkable water Ooh. collection. And and that's kind of unusual because we look around for we looked around for certification for potable water mm -hmm. even prior to us getting this coating that we have, and we, and we didn't find very much for that. So you can collect the water on the Big Island or Kauai or wherever. You can collect the water and you can drink it and know that it's safe to drink. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. That calls for the next slide. <laughs> so what makes it, uh, one of the problems we thought was, okay, we need to be cool. You're the energy, energy czar, as it were, and we need to be, we need to make sure that the house is going to be cool. And yet, we didn't want to just have a lot of white boxes. One of the things we mm -hmm. pride ourselves on is when it's all done, it's a blank canvas. It is literally a white blank canvas. And you can paint on it whatever you want to. Mm -hmm. So we've made some stencils that people can easily spray or sponge on. Or you can hire an artist or bring mm -hmm. out the artist in yourself. And you can make your house look like whatever you want to. If you want an expensive looking tile roof, you can do that. Mm -hmm. If you like it looking like brick, we can do that. If you just want to have local patterns or tribal patterns or um, information graphics, you know, in a disaster mm -hmm. area, medical center, things, uh, you know, cafeteria, things like that, it's very easy just to put it on our flat surface. But the heat reflective paint is what allows us to be nice and cool. Mm -hmm. And so you start off with this high pressure laminate board, which has a, a matte finish, like a, a flat, almost like a flat finish. So you can paint right on top of it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so we put our waterproof primers on here on the outside, and then we put our, our NXT paints. And it's a special uh, paint that has special heat reflective coatings. Mm -hmm. And that, will, that means that, the, um, that that works on the reflectance factor and how much will bounce off. And the reflectance factor goes all the way, if this was charcoal, it would be 26%. So if this was black, black, this is 26% reflectivity. It doesn't sound like too much reflectivity. Higher numbers are better. Uh, the white uh, the white coating is about ninety to ninety one percent, which is right at about the upper range of what you can get mm -hmm. down to twenty six. But it's substantially more. If that same black charcoal paint was not didn't have our UV reflective tint, it would reflect less than one half of a percent. And we've got the statistics for that. Mm -hmm. Whereas ours is twenty six percent. And then you get into the fifty and sixty percent reflectivity when you get into kind of these kind of mid beige colors, 50, 60%. Mm -hmm. and as you get lighter into the pastels and you get to 70, 80, anything mm -hmm. over 70% is considered a, um, uh, a uh, certified by the Cool Roof Council for Absolutely, yeah. So 70 yeah. plus is good. So the pure white is 90, 91. But if you just don't want a white cube, you can at least um, paint the, uh, the sides of your building mm -hmm. um, different, uh, all sorts of colors. You have and even really dark colors if you want to. The purpose here is to keep the heat out before it even thinks about penetrating through. Yeah. That's the first line of defense and the best line of defense. It is. And, and so, so that's reflectance on the outside. Now, on the inside, need, this is we, a... We need to take a <coughs> break. Why don't we take a sure. break before we get uh, into that? Because that, that's absolutely fascinating. So, how would we... <clears throat> cool Roof Rating Council, no. Code Green Hawaii, Frank Rogers, President, Cool Roof Hawaii. We will be back in a minute. Aloha and welcome to At the Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King. You can catch me every Wednesday, alive at 5. I'll see you there. <laughs> Aloha, this is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome a studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Good.
Good afternoon again, Howard Wig, Code Green. We have Frank Rogers, president of the Cool Roof Store. We're talking about a combination of tiny homes plus what I would call extreme reflectivity, where you build a whole lot of barrier against penetra the penetration of the sun's heat into a home. And this is a beautiful combination of uh, technology. So why don't we get into how you're doing what I would call super reflectance here and keeping that heat out so beautifully. Yeah, so again, as we were saying on the outside, where imagine this is your roof. Mm -hmm. The sun is going to come, it's going to reflect off. So that's called total solar reflectance, TSR. Mm -hmm. And the higher numbers will be 90, 80, 70. Anything above 70 is, is considered a cool roof. But numbers below that also make a big difference. And on the, your sidewall, as we talked about, you might want to have some other colors other than white. You may want to decorate it. And that's perfectly fine. Because with the NXT cool coat, which comes with, your, um, which comes with the house, that will reflect uh, the heat and will last a lot longer than ordinary paint. Now on the underside, on the underside, if you want to have extra protection, you can paint a silver coat on. We can spray a silver coat on, and it acts like a radiant barrier. It acts like the old foil mm -hmm. heat radiant barriers that, that people wrap, um, put up in the rafters. So besides the reflectance on the white surface of up to 90%, you also have what we call, um, you, you keep the solar emittance, not the reflectivity, mm -hmm. but the emittance is the heat that wants to come through your roof. So it's radiated as heat. Mm -hmm. But the foil on the, on the backside, just like on the, the foil houses, will take that heat and send it right back up mm -hmm. through the roof. So it rejects, um, the, after the 90% that you get on your white roof, whatever wants to come through will be rejected by the 76% of it will be, the mm -hmm. heat will be sent back up. So you kind of have a double layer there. You have an mm -hmm. exterior and interior thing. And between the two, um, we're hoping that in certain cases we won't, um, won't have to have a, um, like a, a double wall construction with mm -hmm. typically fiberglass bat insulation yeah. and things yeah. like that. Because that would kind of destroy the purpose and the uh, construction of our, of our unit. Plus the bat would be, what, three, four inches. And when you have a tiny home, that three, four inches <laughs> all around the perimeter, that makes a heck of a lot of difference. It doesn't. We've also noticed that wet climates, let's say Pahoa, Kauai, actually anywhere, people don't like double wall construction. Mm -hmm. When I came, grew up, um, <clears throat> I came here in 1960, and we lived in a single wall construction house uh, in Kailua. I think it was mm -hmm. Redwood. Yeah, it was Redwood, single mm -hmm. wall, you know, tongue and groove. And, um, but with double wall, while it sounds really good, um, in wet climates, you have a lot of mold and mildew yep. that grow back yep. there. You're not sure how bugs get in or where the leaks is and where you can track them. In this unit, um, it's 100% waterproof, even with high winds. But if, if we didn't caulk a joint properly, which has mm -hmm. happened, we'll see a little drip come down. We know exactly where it is. It literally mm -hmm. takes one or two minutes to go up there with caulking and just hit that one little part of the joint mm -hmm. that you did. Mm -hmm. So we claim, our claim is that you have minimal maintenance for 30 years plus on this because you have basically yeah. um, indestructible uh, you know, aluminum and metal type yeah. uh, elements in here and all you have to do is maybe caulk and paint it every you know 10 to 15 years <laughs> yep. as your maintenance so um it's even sealed on the underside so moisture can't get from underneath mm -hmm. the board we, speaking of the underside why don't we go to the next slide here here is a uh, ammonia tile roof now this is not for my um tiny house here but this is just an example of what we do commercially a lot of times you'll you'll see the old uh, ceramic, uh, the old Monier co concrete tiles are weathered, so we clean them and we put on our heat reflective coatings, and that that keeps it cooler and also um, lets you recycle. So those those Monier tiles can last a long, long time, even after thirty or forty years. We recoat them at least one or two a week mm -hmm. on those, and we keep them out of the. The same principle acts with the tiny. Yeah, the and the less heat that any any material absorbs, the longer its life. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Less yeah. expansion, mm -hmm. contraction. So let's go to the next slide. That's uh, the underside of the, of the, of the um, concrete tile, the Monier tile, mm -hmm. painted with the silver. Um, probably one of the best applications, too, is metal buildings and warehouses. Um, and it not only helps keep your thermal emittance down by 76%, but it's really easy to access from the underside with a, with a, a sprayer. And so if you have a metal building and, uh, that is hot, 
but also that you don't want to rust because a lot of times you see the rust forms on the underside oh, yeah. ruins that expensive metal roof so if you spray the zinc coating that's a, a zinc coating it preserves the underside of your um, metal roof as well mm -hmm. as keeping it nice and cool yeah and that calls for yet the next slide oh <laughs> that's just a story they did on um, a Hawaii renovation and that's that's an idea of how you can, this is my office. I actually work out of this every day. It has a 13 foot high ceiling. And um, we wanted to show that you could fit even in a fancy neighborhood, you, you, know, you could stick this and it wouldn't look out of place. We didn't want our thing to look like, uh, you know, sometimes you know, it's a not in my neighborhood you know, for <laughs> tiny houses, for uh, homeless or emergency housing. But we feel if you can make it look attractive, mm -hmm. you can either blend in with the neighborhood or you can decide to even uplift the neighborhood by having a really nice looking look. And I know that was one of the big concerns when we um, talked um, to the uh, city about some of the projects out in um, Makaha. And mm -hmm. it doesn't matter where you are, nobody wants to have you know, a homeless village next to you. Yeah. So our yeah, feeling yeah. is that you have to really sell the neighborhood on this is going to be the nicest looking one mm -hmm. that there is. And mm -hmm. also, the other thing we found out, oddly enough, is that you also have to sell the homeless on having a place to live too because a lot of times there are certain restrictions, you know, sobriety mm -hmm. and, you know, pets and other things that come up. So it's nice to have a place that they really, if they really like it and they desire it, our hope is that we can, we can kind of have them, uh, train them to kind of keep the place up and help clean and even pick up around. Mm -hmm. uh, and the more that, you know, the more that you can get people to kind of take care yeah. of stuff, yeah. perhaps they get, a, you know, their own unit they don't have to share. Mm -hmm. We'd love to see what could be done to kind of rehabilitate and retrain people. Precisely, um, yeah. And that's what we do. My, my, my other company, Leak Master Roofing, we do work um, retraining through Laumaka. You know, um, some, we have some prisoners that have been some of our best people that we've gotten back into the mix. Mm -hmm. And I also have a feeling that a lot of the homeless, um, once they get into a nice, secure yep. situation, some of them have real um, building talents and other talents. And so if they can store their tools someplace safely and they're not sleeping underneath a freeway because nobody can go to work after sleeping under a freeway and be very effective, if we can get them stabilized, get them off the wrong chemicals and maybe even have their meds adjusted in the, the correct way, I would mm -hmm. like to see uh, the able-bodied homeless come back into the workforce and make mm -hmm. some good money and, and have a stable life. And, and that's, that's kind of my longer uh, goal for that. That's what I really And feel. another possibility would be ADUs, accessory dwelling unit. Access stick yeah. this in, in your backyard and you're, you're off and running. Yeah, so we're hoping that we can get some uh, pre approvals from the building department and they'll say, okay, as long as you're going with this unit, since it is modular, since it is a known quantity, um, that once it's approved, that it will be easier for it to go through the building permit process. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, okay, well, we know the structure of this. And as long as you abide by, I guess, the setbacks and all the other building regulations, that it would be a, a quicker, um, a quicker um, mm -hmm. stamp on the permit is what yeah. we're hoping and for us and for the building department. A partial solution to the headlines every day in the paper. <laughs> need homes, need homes, especially we need affordable homes. And I think we've got one or two more slides. Let's see. Oh, yes, this is... How you mount the homes. Yeah. You, you don't just put them on the ground. You're, right. So yeah. to let you know, so what we do is we sell this as a kit. Uh, so everything you need in the kit um, for the basic unit, and it's $12,850. And we charge uh, $950 to assemble it on your level lot on Oahu. Now, the foundation is going to be up to the owners. Now, in this particular case, this owner had a contractor put down 12 of these 100-pound blocks. And um, those blocks will be buried. You see them on top for placement. But those will be buried in the ground and cemented with quick creek and then aligned there. Um, and if you really want a lot of wind up re uh, resistance, we put 16 blocks on there. We put another row of four on there. And then those blocks are cemented, buried in the ground. And you'll see the metal strap that comes up through the block. And then our um, metal framework, as you see there, uh, fits right on the corner block. And if you look at the very bottom, you'll see a strap that's coming up from underneath the block. That's mm -hmm. the strap that's cemented into the concrete. And then we, th we drill through and through bolted on all of these and bolted through. So imagine um, that you don't have the weakest link in a chain. You know, the, mm -hmm. old, the old saying, the weakest link in a chain. Because all of, these, all of these are through bolted to each other. And then further, the plywood, three quarters plywood is through bolted 
through all of these, you have a very, you, it's all or nothing. The structure is all going to go up yeah, in one big yeah, piece. Yeah. You're not going to have the, the shingles fly off, which opens up and you have all the, the flooding. You're not going to have, oh, and, you know, a fascia board peel back and then the wind captures, perches, and, and pulls that off. It's all one great big unit that's, in, you know, inexorably connected together and then cemented down on the, on the footing. So if you have good footings and you put them down there, yeah. you also don't have a big eave. Um, the eave is where the wind will come underneath the, uh, the wind will come underneath the, your eave and capture it on a house mm -hmm. and pull it up. Mm -hmm. But we have such a, uh, what we call a 12-12 slope, a 90 degree slope. We only have an eight inch eave on the bottom side. So the wind is, is more apt to go off the roof here, doesn't get much purchase here. And this is bolted by so many different um, stainless steel mm -hmm. bolts and clips that it's, it's not going to pull off anyway. Um, so we're thinking that we have a really good wind, wind profile for that, and particularly when you bolt them together in multiple units, um, that that's even a stronger, even a stronger formation. And we've got one or two more slides left. Yeah. Here you see it being erected. It gives you a good idea. And that aluminum is what we call T6 aluminum. The alloy is 6061. It's used in aircraft. It's used for structural building. It's a very well-known um, quantity by the building department. And you see how it's all kind of bolted together with our brackets and, um, and our panel connectors, and, and it's just starting to go up there. So you can mm -hmm. see how it all goes together. Two people can put that together in two or three days, yep. um, just handy people. And you just an A-frame ladder, no special tools, you know, a little mm -hmm. drill bit and uh, uh, that sort of thing. Yeah. You know, pretty And pretty I think basic. we've got maybe one more. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, this is a cute one. Yeah. This so if what, you look at our model yeah. down below, this is, a, the, this is a loft. That's a five-foot ceiling, and it's 10 feet um, from left to right. And uh, so as I like to say, you could fit two LeBron Jameses up there because LeBron is not quite 10, 10 feet as far as I know. And on the other side, you'll see another one just the same size. So you could put one kid on that side, even a big kid. You could put a, a, certainly an adult, any adults up there. And then the middle one, we just kind of have decked out for personal things. But if, in a pinch, you could put a third kid, uh, you know, on, uh, on the middle section, or even a third adult in the middle section, too, if we're talking mm -hmm. emergency situation. All the yeah. villages are down. It's raining. You got bugs and centipedes. It's dark. You want shelter. Um, you can get three above, and then down below, I think if you show another slide, you'll see that we have... Yeah, look um, at this. This doesn't show the bed, because I'm kind of sitting on the bed when I take the picture, but you see just the corner of the bed on the left. But here we imagine that if you had two in this 10 by 12 foot area, you could have a toilet, and what you don't see in this picture behind the toilet is a shower head. So you can actually mm -hmm. take a shower there, and there's shower curtains that, that draw. Mm -hmm. You see a kitchen, you see tables, um, microwave, and then you can put a double inflatable bed, which is where I was taking the picture from. So you could have two adults or, or, uh, or down below, and you could have three kids up mm -hmm. above. I think that would be a reasonable expectation. Yeah. And again, it's a little bit on the cramp side, but <laughs> if you're in an emergency situation, this is absolute luxury. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a lot of people are going to be using it for, or would like to use it for like a grandma unit, and we're trying to get mm -hmm. that approval from the building department so that if we follow all the right uh, rules that we can get that sort of thing. Absolutely. And on that cheery note, we have more to cover, but we don't have any time to cover it on. Frank Rogers, thank you so much. This is a great, great program. And that does it for today's Think Tech Hawaii. Howard Wig. see you next time.